Have you ever been playing a chess game, had a nice position, convert that into a winning position, and then blunder in one move and lose the game? That's exactly what happened to me, and in this video I'm going to show you the worst game I've ever played, in my opinion. This game was played in the Under-16 World Youth Chess Olympiad, taking place in Konya, Turkey, in 2018. So it was six years ago, and I was playing with the black pieces against Puter Nikola, who was playing with the white pieces. And a little bit of context before we start the game. I was playing this tournament, it's a world championship pretty much, and it's a team tournament, meaning that we represent our country, in my case I was representing my native a country Mexico and we were playing against South Africa what happens if you don't know about team tournaments you need four boards and for example you need two two points and a half to win the round because it's a team championship so two of us and a third player has to draw in order to take the match point so it's team tournament I'm in the fourth board so I'm in the lower board but I managed to qualify for this I was very excited. I didn't get to play many international tournaments back then. And uh, I would to this day still say that this is the biggest tournament I've ever played. I saw big names like Esipenko Andrei, Russian Grandmaster, very young. Liresa Firuja is the biggest name. I think Arjun Erigaisi was there. Amazing tournament and an experience that was unbelievable. But everything has good and bad, right? So this game is something that really made me realize that chess is cruel. And I want you to learn from it. So with the black pieces I have myself, and with the white pieces we have Puter Nikola. And don't don't worry about the rating. Look at the rating. It is it is it is a number, of course. But when you're younger, or when you're kind of catching up in international rating, the rating can be a little bit deceiving. So I think my opponent's rating was higher, and probably my my rating was a little bit higher. It was inflated. Probably I should have been lower. I don't know. We're gonna start the game. My opponent played e4. I played e5. Knight f3. Knight c6. And bishop c4, this is the Italian opening, I played bishop c5, c3, knight f6, d4, this is the juco piano. Juco pianissimo is d3, but the juco piano d4, this is kind of the way they, they played this back when this was a new opening. So they, they call this the main line. I took on d4, in this position white can play e5, but c takes d4 is, 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 is a big alternative. Bishop b4. And in this position, white can get out of the check in so many ways. Knight bd2 has been played, I've faced this in a tournament. Knight c3 had been played. Bishop d2 was what uh, my opponent played in this game. And even king f1, when I was checking this game, king f1 even is played. Claiming that, okay, maybe knight takes c4, there's some tricks with the queen e2 and along the, the e-file. d5 is the main line. And um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a position that is full of little novelties and so many surprises. Well, not novelties now, but you can surprise your opponent with king f1. Bishop d2 was played by my opponent, I took on e4, bishop takes b4, and now white pretty much plays a forcing sequence of moves that gets us into an endgame. So I took on b4, there's not much to be done. Bishop takes f7. If white were to play queen b3 first, attacking the knight and the f7 pawn because of the battery, I would play d5. And after queen takes b4, d takes e4, queen takes c4, in this position after castling, okay, white got the pawn back, but if we look at the pawn structure, White has an isolated pawn, which means that that pawn is going to be pretty weak. And in isolated kind of pawns, uh, isolated pawns kind of positions, I should say, White wants to avoid trading pieces. But because we already traded a couple of minor pieces, this would be kind of already slightly better for Black. There's a hole on d5. We're gonna put a rook on e8. That pawn, as long as it's well well protected and we it doesn't advance too much too deep into our position, is going to be a big advantage. So queen b3 is not played here. Bishop takes f7 is the main move. King takes f7. You're going to say, David, why just sacrifice the bishop? That doesn't make sense. But and now it makes sense. Queen b3, check. This is a fork. You're attacking the king and the knight. I have to do something to get out of check. Um, I can't save this knight, for example. This, of course, this. There are two ways to play in this position. I chose the save one. I chose king f8. But people play d5 if they want to go for a win. I didn't do this because you really know, need to know what you're doing as black, but just so I let you know what's going on. After a 95 check, you have to find king e6, and after queen takes before getting back the material, if not, you're just going to be pretty happy about having extra material. You have to play c5, and after queen e3, the line continues going. It's pretty crazy. You don't want a king on e6, but this is sound. Computers defend very well, and I think that we detected this once computers 
became available and we used it as a tool so this is a very it's a playable position but it's a little bit scary so i chose king f8 after queen takes before getting back material i played queen e7 and this is what i was talking about we're getting into an endgame after this pretty much and what we can we can talk about is well okay white has an isolated pawn but in exchange i have to do something with this bishop and white is up in in development very very slightly and that makes white not be worse if black had a pawn on d6 a bishop on e6 a rook on e8 a rook or rook on f8 e8 i should say then i think black would have an advantage because this isolated pawn is more of a weakness but because black is down in development white is absolutely fine white play knight c3 i play knight f6 claiming that this is going to keep being a, an isolated weak pawn castles i play king d8 because i knew that this was going to come eventually king d8 knight d5 rook f8 and slowly but surely we're getting into a position that has never been reached before i think i think if i don't want to lie yeah there we go i think 95 was already a blond uh sorry not a blunder a novelty rook fe1 had been played before but 95 rook f8 this is already a new game and after rook fe1 d6 and rook hg1 very sorry rook a d1 oh i did it the other way around i don't know what's going on um we get into this position and i remember here <laughs> i was a little bit scared because i was like oh my opponent sees all sorts of tactics but the point is that after e6 white is doing well e7 is a threat e takes d7 is a threat i think in this position i got a little bit too scared and i played bishop f5 bishop d7 is according to the computer the best move bishop f5 there's nothing wrong with this white played rook e3 trying to double in the e-file still this is kind of unplayable because of the same motive i played rook e8 knight c4 bishop e6 b3 and knight d5 i'm trying to trade pieces because as i said the more I trade, the better I'm going to be in the endgame. And actually, after this transformation, I have a bishop against the knight. That's one of the biggest imbalances other than the one we already mentioned, which is uh, the isolated pawn. Knight d3 was played, bishop f7. I took my bishop out. Of course, I'm not going to blunder the bishop. Rook e1, king f8. Um, king d7 runs into knight f5. And then the bishop, and, sorry, the pawn and rook e7 hitting the bishop are both attacked. I didn't see any good response, so king f8 was played. And after rook c1, c6, my opponent went for a very creative idea, d5. I skipped forward a little bit because we're getting to the position that I really want to talk about. b5 is putting strategy at the service of tactics. And I've, I've said this before in my videos, and I'm going to keep repeating it, of course. You want that to be the other way around. That's the, the best way to do it. That's how chess masters think. They put tactics at the service of strategy. Strategy is what you want to do. Tactic is how you do it. Tactic is concrete. Tactics is mm, bishop takes h7, knight g5, queen h5, mate. But strategy is I want a space advantage. I want a king's eye attack. So in this position, uh, my opponent, Puter Nikola, is doing the opposite. My opponent is saying, okay, I don't care about strategy. I'm going to put tactics in front. I see this trick with d5, c takes d5, and knight b6, and I'm going to get my pawn back, and I, I like that tactic. Now, this one's not that bad. Actually, if not, if anything, it's pretty creative and it's not affecting the position too much. After rook a6, knight takes d5, king d7 though, my opponent did the same thing. My opponent knew that, okay, the knight is hit. You can move the knight back and it's a completely drawn position. Of course, there's a lot of play. Maybe I'm getting a4 if knight c3, rook c6. But my opponent did the same thing. Rook takes c6 claiming that after king takes c6, you're going to say, David... A rook is worth le uh, worth more than a bishop. Why did your opponent do that? Because of the, th the fork on c7. And when you see this and you're a beginner, you're like, ah, look, a fork. I'm going to play the fork. But you know, you don't realize that. That's not what you want strategically. Because after king e5, knight takes a6, b takes a6. Sure, you did damage my pawn structure. But my king is going to start getting into your territory, starting to take these pawns. My king is much more active. This is the biggest difference in this position. And that's the reason why. Rook takes e6 is a losing mistake. Okay, in this position, this was what happened in the game. I remind you, I'm playing in a tournament, team tournament. If I win this game, it's very likely that we will at least draw the match. I'm bored for. I believe that my my other the other the other uh, two boards had already won, so it was between the board four or board two. If we had won or drawn in any of those games, we would have won the match point. So that's the the state of the game for now. King f2 was played, king d4, I just get my king to c3, now you can really notice what the difference between these two kings is. And then I just started pushing. 
Now, some important things happen here. Um, I, I don't want to push right away. I, saw, I thought I could stop these pa pawns first. My opponent sacrificed the pawn. Very, very good understanding of the position because what impor what's important in this position is to create a path pawn. So h4, g4, very good idea. I played d5, g5, and this is essentially a pawn raise. f3, creating creating a check on d1. So for example, if, if this happens, then I'm going to promote first. And if king e2, king c2, I'm going to promote first with check. So that's my idea with f3. My opponent plays king f2, very resourceful. And we're getting closer to, to the moment of, of grief, <laughs> of sadness. And this is instructive. In this position, we were running out of time. And I was calculating d4, h5, e3, g6. And for some reason, after h takes e6, h6, I just thought, oh my goodness, my opponent is promoting with check. This is a big problem. And I eliminated that line. And I said, let's keep finding something. I didn't realize that I had queen d4 check. And after queen takes d4, there's not much to be done. This is a winning endgame. Because after king takes f3, I'm just going to take these two pawns. I'm going to promote my own pawn. And in the meantime, white is going to take ages worrying about this pawn first. And then trying to get back. That's impossible. So I reject that line mistakenly. I'm nervous. Remember, this is kind of my first inter international tournament. I'm playing for my country. I'm trying to make everyone proud, right? And I, I, I feel nervous. I d4. It's not working. So I play king d4. And now this is a draw. This is a this lost my whole advantage. But it gets worse. King takes f3 was played by my opponent. Very logical. King e5. King g4. D4. H5. I play king e4. E4. And now this is still a draw. In this position, white has to find king g3. This is this is the way to draw this game. After king f5, g6, h takes g6, h takes g6, king f4, you're going to get this pawn as white. And after this, it's going to be a draw. This is a draw. Even though I have damaged pawn structure, um, yeah, the, the pawns are in the same island. Maybe if there was a passed pawn somewhere in the h file as white, you would be winning. But that's a draw. But my opponent played g6, so now I'm back into I'm back winning. I'm, I'm winning again. But do you know what happened? Oh, this is horrible. In this position, I once again started calculating h takes g6, and then I said, okay, well, what happens? h takes g6, d3. And then I said, oh no, my opponent uh, uh, my opponent promotes first, and even if I give a check, yeah, nah, this is not working. But you obviously kind of already know this is working, because this is actually what your dream as a chess player to get some endgame like this. There's nothing white can do to not lose this game. There's nothing white can do to save it. King g5 runs into queen g8. Uh, sorry, qu king g5 runs into queen g1, skewering the king and the queen. So I would win like this. And if king h4, same thing. I'm just winning. And I didn't see that. And it's such a beautiful way of winning. So my opponent played g6. I played d3, which is a big mistake. By the way, after h6, h6, that's the other alternative. This is also not working because I queen with check. And now I trade queens by force. And I remind you, this this is always winning. Because I get to these guys first, and then I promote. So, I... Yeah, I, I didn't see that. I played d3 directly. And after h takes g7, d2. Sure, I promote with check. But this is a much worse version of what I... I don't know what happened to me. I was nervous. I was in time trouble. And after king g5, I continued giving checks. And I gave a wrong check, queen d6. I should have played queen g2. I give it a wrong check. Now it's no longer a draw. Now it's losing, queen f6. And at some point, the problem is that my king is way too much in the center. Funnily enough, in this queen and pawn endgames where your opponent has an extra pawn, you want your king far away, so it, it doesn't get checked. But what happens in my position is that at some point, white forces... I don't know why I played king e4 here. White forces a queen trade. So for example, if I go to the f file, Queen f7 is going to be game over. After this queen trade, it's obvious that my opponent's pawn is faster. And what happened is that I had to go to either d4 or d3, but either way, queen c4 is also trading queens. And after this, a little bit more, I resigned the game. And we actually drew the match. I had a winning position. I could have drawn it. Like My opponent was probably hoping and, and for a miracle and maybe draw, drawing the game, but I, I just blundered everything and I... I, what, what a bad, what a horrible, horrible. Now, why did I show you this game? Well, 
this is going to happen so many times. Like, this is not the first. In fact, it wasn't the first time it happened to me. Let me be honest. It wasn't the first time. And it, it, of course, it wasn't the last time. If you don't believe me, join the streams. You're going to see me blunder all the time. But this one was very painful. And it's one of those things where it kind of film quote again. But if you don't learn from it, you're, you're, you're going to be left depressed and, and, and losing. And my, my, aim with this video is to show you that it's fine it's it's going to happen you're gonna hate yourself you're gonna try to quit chess but then it happens so many times it happens to masters it happens to gms um ganguli grandmaster from india got checkmated in four moves it really happens you 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 have to learn from this because it's going to continue happening and you might as well get used to it that's chess that's life and uh just to to kind of finish the story here after the game, my um, the representative or the, the Mexican coach that went with us, she told me, "You had a win, David. Why, why did you not play in this line?" Um, what happened to my internet? Why did you not play H takes G six? This was winning, David. Did you not see that? And I was like, "Oh no, I saw that." And then she said, "It's fine. Don't worry. It's your first experience." And it's always important to kind of have perspective on these things. It's not the end of the world. You're going to learn from this. That's my message to you. So if you have this similar experience, watch this video. I'm quite sure it's not going to be as bad as mine. And if it is, okay, welcome to the club. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, any suggestions, please let me know. I'm happy to read your comments. Subscribe, give a like. I would really appreciate it. And have a nice day.